The Bigode M104 is known for being the smallest electric unicycle currently on the market after Bigode stopped producing the M103. And I think you can ride stairs with it. Yeah, with a 1000 watt motor. An 11 inch tire and a 750 watt hour battery. Sorry, I just messed up the video file. Back to the video. Bigot claims that you can get a whopping 50 kilometers out of this wheel within one charge. But I can spoil it already, there's no way of you getting this far with this wheel in one charge. But more on that in a second. So you are probably wondering, is this the best small and portable last mile solution you can get right now? Let's find out. What's up my dudes, I received the Bigode M10 for just before New Year and I rode so far 550 kilometers to be exact 536.3 So in this video I want to tell you a little bit more about the pros, the cons, my experience and the possibilities of upgrading your wheel and what upgrades you might want to consider when you have that wheel. Let's talk about the use case of this wheel because it doesn't have the greatest range, it's not the fastest and I even have ridden way more comfortable wheels with suspension or 16 or 18 inch tire. But that doesn't mean you are missing out on a super fun wheel because this wheel is super fun. Riding backwards has never been that easy, at least for me, and even some friends started learning how to ride an electric unicycle with this one, and they managed really well just after a few minutes of riding. Not everyone, but some. So I guess you could say it's a good beginner wheel, but I wouldn't use this as your first wheel because it is so small and it is not the most comfortable wheel. So it's definitely a last mile solution for maybe the last one or maybe two kilometers. But if you ever want to go for a bigger ride, let's say five kilometers and upwards, I would always choose the 16, 18, 20 inch wheel, maybe with suspension if you have, because it's just way more comfortable. For example, I use this wheel all the time to go to the gym or to the supermarket it's around one kilometer away and I just don't want to carry up or down my 35 kilogram wheel into the third floor I know these are some serious first world problems we have over here maybe you don't live as close to the bus station or the train station maybe you don't want to leave your bicycle at the train station because it gets stolen all the time then this wheel might actually be a great solution for you because it's so easy to carry around carry not trolley we will talk about that in a second and yes I do really enjoy the right feeling of the M104 but now I got two major problems with this wheel and the first one though are my feet let me explain the problem with a European shoe size of 48 which is equivalent to the US 13 is really easy to solve you just get bigger pedals also with spikes I think that's way safer I got the original Bigode Master pedals, which are also now on the T4. A friend gave them to me, they are really, really heavy. Otherwise, you could choose some E-Ride pedals or Nylo Double pedals. And even though they are quite expensive, I would say they improve the ride comfort by quite a lot. So it's actually something to think about. You also want to consider something to jump up with and to jump down with. I put on the old torque pads I have, you can also use the Grizzly Minis I guess or just build something yourself but you definitely want something to have grip on top of your foot so you can jump. The wheel just loses all of its convenience and it's probably just like an electric scooter which is not convenient to me when you can't jump up a curb or jump down a curb. I can also recommend you a light protection, which I don't have, and a top cover protection. Grizzler produces one, I'm sure there are other ones. Or you just put some baby foam around it, it doesn't look great, but it definitely protects your wheel. Because that's usually where the wheel falls. Or at least in my case, that's where the wheel fell when my friends tried to ride this electric unicycle. And when they had a small accident, it usually fell 
on the light or on the top cover and it made some scratches. I saw some people using a PMT tire instead of an original knobby tire and I think that's actually a great solution because it will feel way more flowy and you don't need this knobby tire, you don't need the grip, it's not an off-road tire. So I think that's something to consider even it costs you around 50 euros. Even after swapping out my pedals, I still get some foot fatigue after around 5 kilometers on my left foot. I don't know if that's a specific thing to small wheels or if it comes faster with small wheels. Maybe you know something about it. However, the second problem is that I live in Germany. Living in a country where it's legally not allowed to ride electric unicycles on the street means you need to quite often push or carry your electric unicycle around. I think it's about to rain. Not again, especially in areas, now it starts raining, great, especially when you commute with it and go through main stations, the city center, whatever, you will just not ride your wheel because you know the police will stop you and they will find you and you are a criminal and whatever. Long story short, you can't ride the wheel all around, that means you need to carry or push the wheel. That means, yes, the GOAT has continued the era of electric unicycles without any trolley handle like the M103. And I've also seen a guy with a strap around his shoulder carrying the M104 like a handbag. But you shouldn't forget, it's still 13 kilograms out of the box plus add-ons. And this is not the terrain for the M104. Police! I got so lucky, I wasn't riding right now. I was just super lucky. I really don't want to make a waterproofing test with this wheel. I think it's okay, but I don't want to destroy my bearings on this wheel as well. So let's go inside. It has stopped raining again, at least for a little bit, I think. Well, there are solutions for the M104 without a trolley handle, which is an aftermarket trolley handle. I think it completely destroys the look and maybe that's why they didn't install the trolley handle in the first place because usually it's integrated and this wheel is supposed to be really small but having a trolley handle outside for me completely destroys the look. Oh and the wheel doesn't have a lift switch so you always turn it off when you want to put it down. But you could install a lift switch like the French YouTuber, I don't know the name. I forgot your name, I'm sorry, but this guy created a lift switch for it in his video. By the way, the charging situation on this wheel gets my heart pumping every time. Whose fingers are supposed to open that cap? I think definitely not mine. I always use a key or something to open that thing up. I also created a 3D print to put a cover on top and having a knob to pull it out instead of this stupid thing but it was one millimeter too small so i will need to redesign it let's talk about performance and this 1000 watt motor really keeps you going it's crazy it has 11 inch so, so the torque is quite good you can feel how the pedals dip while braking and while accelerating but i think it's pretty impressive how this tiny machine really brings you forward. Until now, on a full or half full charge, it climbed every mountain I asked for. At some point it starts beeping, but then you know your battery is kind of empty. And I mean, it's not an off-road wheel, it's not for designed for going off-road, but I think it's really impressive. This mountain I go quite often to my gym and it has never ever disappointed me. Here you can really see there's no suspension and a small tire, so bumps kind of make it hard to ride, at least in the beginning. And for me, it's a wheel where I don't go faster than 30 kilometers an hour, because this 11 inch tire without suspension is just not, cap it is capable, but I think it's just really dangerous to go faster because of these tiny bumps. The last thing I want to talk about is the range of this 1300 euro expensive 
electric mini unicycle. I personally get around 20 kilometers, more or less, and the wheel is not fun to ride when the battery is almost dead. I mean, you can still go 20 kilometers an hour when you have like 5% or 3%, which is pretty impressive. The wheel starts beeping at 66 volts, if that is for any interest. But these 20 kilometers of riding is ripping, not super ripping, but just having fun, accelerating, braking, going up and down mountains. I'm an 85 kilogram rider when I am naked, so all in all it's probably 90, 95 kilograms. And you don't want to go further than 20 kilometers an hour, because if you want to go 20 kilometers an hour, you choose a completely different wheel. So even the range is not what the goat claims, it's more than enough. I haven't ever been disappointed and often you can charge in between when you wait, when you go to a cafe, wherever. So I just think, yes, it is a great city cruiser, last mile solution, something to carry on. And this is probably one of the steeper mountains. I go 17, 15. That's this weird big old thing. So it gives me one out of five bars, but I'm going up this really steep mountain with 17 kilometers an hour. Now it started beeping. And the mountain and this hill has 20%, 11 degrees. And I think that's kind of steep for a normal street. Even for a city where a lot of mountains are, Here's another one. Riding down is like skiing, that's pretty sick. I've never been on skis, but I feel like it's probably a little bit like skiing. So all in all, at least in my opinion, this wheel has no problems at all with mountains. It definitely shines at its nimbleness. And even the wheel has its cons. It definitely shines with its nimbleness and its weight and it's fun. So in the end there are always people who hate on the wheel and there are always people who really love the wheel. It has its pros and its cons and I'm just wondering what do you think about this wheel? My next video will be from Abu Dhabi from the Sahara wheelers. So feel free to leave a like or maybe even a sub because we just hit the 300 subs and I'm really thankful for that. I'm looking forward to do a lot more content from different countries and from different reels. So we got the Monster Pro, the other Master Pro, the Pattern, a V13, a Sherman S, and two EX30s. The sun is about to go up, it's really hot, but it's okay.